was brought to my attention that uh, with the previous video on forehand technique, we went over lunges, and the angle uh, was pretty poor when I was, I was doing the demonstration of the lunges, and you really couldn't see my feet. So I wanted to uh, take the time to go over the lunges again in some more detail um, with the better angle. We went over two types of lunges. We went over sagittal plane lunges, that's straight forward and back, and transverse plane lunges, that's with rotation. Um, the sagittal lunges are good, it's a nice straight forward simple exercise. The, the rotational ones, the transverse ones make a lot of sense because it mimics the disc golf motion a little bit more, or at least engages the same muscles you would be using. So with a, you know, the backhand throw, I'm planted with my right leg if I'm right handed, and I'm driving through using these hip muscles, um, uh, for, particularly for some rotation, my glutes and those hip rotators. And if I'm throwing a forehand, I'm playing with my left, and I'm really using the, the left hip muscles to rotate through. So we want to strengthen those muscles. If I'm doing a sagittal plane, plane lunge, what I want to do is I want to step with one leg and then press back. And I, I can go pretty deep. Ideally, the deeper the better. If you have pain at a certain amount of knee flexion, don't go down as far. Stay a little bit lower. Things to pay attention to that people mess up all the time. Oftentimes they step and then pull back with their back leg. You want to use this front leg to propel you back to that starting point. You also want to make sure that your knee does not go in front of your toes. If I go too far forward here, um, I'm putting too much pressure on my patellofemoral joint. That's the joint between your, your, your kneecap and your femur. So I want to keep my knee in front of my toes. If we do it from this angle here, I'm keeping it here rather than here. I want to make sure, just like we talked about with core strength in the past, that I'm keeping my spine in a neutral position throughout the motion. I'm going to step and not do this. Step, keeping my stomach muscles engaged and my trunk in a neutral position. With the rotational ones, I'm going to stand with the same starting position. I'm going to step with rotating my, my foot so it's pointing 90 degrees from relative to my starting point. I'm basically stepping diagonally away and then back. Forces some of these hip rotators to fire differently than, I, than with a regular lunge. Same things apply. I'm not letting my toe go, in, or my knees go in front of my toes, I'm not arching or rotating my back um, throughout the motion, particularly as I'm coming back to the starting point. One extra thing to think about is that if I'm doing a lunge, I can focus on various muscles. I can stay more upright and it engages my quad muscles a little bit more. Well, I can reach forward more and that's going to engage my glutes, which is really more of what we're trying to get. So I can step forward, reach down towards my toes, and then step back to that starting point here, and then step back. If I want to engage the quads, I'm going to stay more upright. Uh, again, we probably want to do more reaching down to engage those quads. One thing to pay attention to is as I'm stepping, that I'm not arching my back, that I'm only coming back if I'm reaching down to a neutral position in the end.